Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Science Thursday, we're going to talk about the Rodon heat battery. So let's dive deep into it. So why do we have a need for heat battery? Well, reality is our world runs on heat. And yes, it sounds odd coming from an Indian given the fact that we need more air condition. It's just that even in India, all the industry still consumes heat like there is no tomorrow. For food, for paper, for metal, for cement, for concrete, for whatever else have you, we consume heat like there is no tomorrow. Like heat is something that we need. And how much heat these industries consume? To give you a context, it's cheaper for them to buy the raw fuel, burn it and get 100% of energy out that way. So that's why we have a serious amount of fuel consumption in industry itself even though they are not physically moving because it's cheaper for them to just uh, literally consume fuel get the 100% heat out of it because we might feel combustion inefficiencies happen and then you have com conversion of basically fuel to electricity is always inefficient compared to fuel to heat fuel to heat is 100% so we always end up with way too much CO2 production from industry itself what kind of scale that we are talking about of this exact problem? Well, uh, two thirds of global energy consumption. So yeah, bonkersly large amount of energy is just consumed by industry as a format of heat itself. And uh, one good news and bad news is that if you can get up to 400 degrees Celsius, majority of them will be taken care of. Uh, only some naughty puppies will be remaining. For example, steel, this puppy almost demands 2000 degrees Celsius. And some, some niche industries do exist that are like a bit higher than that. But if you can get 400 degrees Celsius, 80% of industry will be taken care of. If you can go up to 1000 or more than that, uh, last 5%. If you touch 2000, almost 100%. So that's why we need and be mindful that is the another reason why we do not do uh, you know co basically heat pumps heat pumps do not give you this temperature so for that reason we have to use fuel to create heat so that's why we are, we have a need for heat batteries so what's the logic behind it while electricity is expensive there are certain times where electricity is super duper hyper cheap it's just that it's whenever renewables are producing. So renewable energy is very cheap. Then why don't why don't every company is just like, you know, have a solar farm or high contract a wind farm and be like done with it or just talk with a grid operator and it's like, hey, can you just, you know, give us energy when it's cheaper? Well, uh, they do do that in aluminum industry, but problem is schedule. So renewables energy, they have more than enough energy. We have crossed that threshold where humanity used to say, oh, solar will never provide enough power. That's that's done. That part, that era is gone. Solar and wind at this point in time, energy is not the issue. It's overproduction. We have power curtailment, meaning we have to turn down some wind farms or we have to shut down sectors of uh, basically solar farm because we are overproducing. So that 24 into 7, that absence of that 24 into 7 is the issue it's because solar will overproduce during the day you need this much let's say you need around um, uh, 20 25 megawatts that's the your requirement that's how much heat you need in terms of megawatt how much sun is produ solar is producing solar could easily produce you 65 so this is from 6 uh, a.m in the morning to 6 p.m at the night and uh, this is 0 to 0 in 24 hours so this is day one day two day three now if we can just heat this puppy and dump it into that night part Problem solved. Solar, cheap energy, problem solved. And again, solar has this sort of easy peaks, but the wind also has its own tune. So it may not be working when you want it to work. It may be like a lot of energy at night. Then you're like, operators are like, shut it down. That happens. That's real thing. It's happening right now, where which we call power curtailment. So power is cheap. Electricity is cheap. It's just that if we can solve this 24 into 7 issue, all problems will be solved. So what are the requirements? First requirement is storing the energy as in like this part. You eat that and dump it here. So you need to store it. What is the requirement here? Requirement is efficiency, meaning if I uh, buy 100 megawatt hour uh, units, basically let's say 100 megawatt unit, I should be able to get at least 90 or 95 out of it. I stored that much, at least I should get that much back. Uh, if it's lower than that, because let's say pumped hydro, it's a very good system, but it's very inefficient. It does not touch 100%, nor even like if you are lucky, 70 to 80%. Uh, there are other systems that do work. They have some amazing efficiency, <laughs> like uh, the round trip efficiency. Yeah, bad, very bad. A lithium ion battery, they are very good, but they have another problem. They are not cost effective, meaning if somebody just like a factory just went into, hey, can you give me a like you know plant where I can store 10 megawatt hour, yeah, the cost would be so goddamn high, the company would be like, my factory is cheaper than the battery bank that you are selling us. So it has to be low cost and it has to be if, uh, able to store energy efficiently. If we can solve that issue, like 
take this dump it here we will decarbonize industry in a bigger way right now we are trying to solve like multiple small things that's a good thing to do but industry are almost ignoring because it's too big of a problem but if somebody can solve this part the impact would be disproportional meaning the same way when i talked about that uh, truck that uh, diesel serial hybrid truck is that uh, because vocational trucks consume majority of the fuel uh, of the industries of the world so if you save even few percent there it will translate to a much larger impact same with here industry you like you do not need to decarbonize 100 percent of household but if you decarbonize industry like even though on paper you're like ah, i only reduce like you know concrete itself it's like output co2 buy so it's a very serious need and there is a serious demand for it if you can just eat this part here so there is a good economical logical of doing it it's not like the companies also don't want to buy fuel because fuel prices fluctuate they don't want to it's just that they don't have another option because of that 24 into 7 problem so what's the design what is this design company is offering well they call it echo heating chamber i do not ask me why they call it echo chamber the idea is that it's not that it's producing sound it's that it's producing infrared and infrared is bouncing around a lot so that's why they call it heat echo chamber so and the key difference between this puppy and all other designs I have seen, all other designs, be mindful, when you are talking about heat, you are you're talking about radiation, you are talking about convection, you are talking about conduction. Most of the system that I have seen, they are focusing on two things, conduction and convection. Here, they are primarily focusing on radiation. It's not a vacuum sealed environment, but they are still focusing on radiation. Now, that may sound odd. It's like, why? If you do not have to deal with vacuum, why are you designing everything to work with radiation? There is a law. That law is Stefan Boltzmann law. Uh, pardon the spelling uh, so this law as you can see there is a t4 there now what does that t4 mean simply if you have two surfaces and one is very hot another is little bit cold it will dump insane amount of energy trying to equilibrate so that equilibration happens very rapidly meaning if you have conduction you could literally have one block of metal one side is hot another side is cold if you have two surfaces and one is hot one is cold the equilibrium will happen much quicker like dramatically versus t4 so nature in terms of a radiation environment will try to match temperatures very rapidly so you do not have to worry about oh this side is overheating this side is still cold so that will not be an issue that means things that are inside the chamber will always slowly go up in temperature and slowly come down in the temperature rather than having hot spots that's a very big uh, advantage of this design compared to all other systems where you have hot air dumping uh, energy into sand which will slowly conduct away this is like bam heat energy turn so what is storing that heat well it's stored by special design fire bricks uh, refractory bricks we use this this is not a new technology it's a known technology but the design that you see is like a very weird design that's why because it's focused on this system they are fine-tuned for infrared reflection and all that so everything it's not relying on convection or conduction okay that will happen that's good not a bad thing because they while they are using radiation to dump heat they will use air to extract it uh, but uh, this has to be designed in such a way that photons are uh, primary energy carrier so to say so this space that's why the brick design is so unique and it's not going through phase change that is a very critical aspect phase changes has its own problems in any system even there are some designs that we have bricks and it has some stuff inside the brick that will melt and it will remelt those have issues so again it's not that it can't be done we do phase change heck our air conditions works on phase change it's just that for energy storage people generally do not want to use that for multiple reasons here this special bricks now this brick is the temperature limitation how hot this puppy can get is like the output of your temperature will be limited by this so if it can reaches let's say 1100 degrees celsius you can get upwards of uh, 1000 degrees celsius output now that should create another issue how the heck you're going to get so much heat out of it so this is where they design another thing clever it's done in chambers meaning output air let's say you dumped energy into it you heated that puppy up it's hot everything is fine everything is awesome now you need to dump that energy let's say it was in a uh, district heating unit where they are like hey we need like very high temperature for some reason and uh, they collected all the solar energy during the day people were not consuming heat but at night people are consuming heat so how the heck you get the right temperature out of this that's also another issue so what they have designed is chamber by chamber unit meaning one chamber you will dump your ambient air you will extract as much temperature as possible and then you dump it into second stage so basically you're preheating the output air benefit of that is now the output air will like literally it will dump down one uh, basically majority of energy would be dumped in phase one second phase will uh, only help you to achieve the right temperature that you will control with uh, you know airflow input and output benefit output temperature is controlled meaning you dump you want your industry to run at 1000 degrees celsius you're gonna get 1000 degrees celsius 
there won't be like ah you know on the like uh, starting it gives you 1000 degrees and then it drops to 800 degrees celsius then it drops to 600 no it will give you full 1000 of course you have to design the system for it but that's the whole point of this bricks design it's like as many bricks as many chambers as many units needed it will be designed in such a way that you will always get exact temperature that you want temperature won't be that uh, slope falling they will compensate for it and how the heck you're going to insulate this puppy for even for one day well uh, primary insulation is the primary insulation but secondary is they are using dynamic insulation meaning the first wall is a normal first wall how you insulate a furnace or something like that that's nothing fancy but after that they have a dynamic insulation what does dynamic insulation mean basically you have a double glazing you have insulation and then you have another insulation in that there is an air channel why do you have air channel well Let's say this is cold side, that's the heated space. You will have the supplier that is going in from the ambient. It will circulate around the building, basically around the chamber and then go inside the chamber. The benefit of that is because you cannot design an insulation that will just like, no, no heat loss. That does not happen. You will always have like some heat leak. If some heat leaks and some of that heat is captured by the air stream that is between these two chamber walls, that means your overall energy loss goes down drastically. So dynamic insulation, again, this company did not invent the system. It's a new system that is being used by many other uh, buildings where uh, in certain scenarios, this gives better insulation compared to just filling that space with uh, insulation. So dynamic insulation, and that allows them to have that high temperature for throughout the day, meaning solar during the day and solar during the next day, it will be hot. So you do not have to worry about, oh, it's just gonna dump all the heat into the ambient environment and at very high temperature. What kind of efficiency, round trip efficiency we are looking at? Upwards of 98%. Now that should trigger red alert. It's like how the heck a storage system can be 98%? Well, this is the key part. What does factories, industries pay for? They pay for heat. They are like, hey, I want heat. So what do you do? You collect the heat, uh, basically collect energy, convert it into heat. So that's 100% efficient. And what after that? You dump heat. There is no phase change. There is no format change. You are not taking AC electricity and making it into DC. You are like taking energy, making it into heat. And how you're dumping it out? You're dumping it out as heat. So of course, there will be some loss. If this insulation is good, but not impossible to breach, there is some loss. So that some loss is explained by like 90% in smaller units. But if you make it large, like basically surface area to volume ratio, that's the key aspect here. So if you have a much larger block unit, basically the unit where you have keeping these puppies, the more blocks, uh, bigger the block becomes, the less surface area it inherently has. The efficiency goes up. So you can get, achieve very high efficiency because again, heating is the only thing that humanity has 100% efficiency. So design is viable, very clever and utilizing uh, multi-stage design, they can achieve exactly the temperature that you seeked out of it. So you won't be like, oh, the day, like, you know, uh, evening is giving me right temperature and then by night it starts to go down. No, you will get exactly the temperature you need. And uh, what about the blocks? How long they will last thermal expansion? No, that's why they are designed this way. Not only this helps them with uh, dumping the heat into air, but it also helps photons to balance each other out. So everything will expand and contract uniformly, meaning this puppy should easily last 40 years. Have we built something like this? Yes, every furnace has this. So we know this, we know that this sort of thing. Dynamic insulation, yeah, it's a known system, we use it. So everything about this is a known tested system. It's just clever arrangement of them. So let's understand the operation of it. Operation is basically low cost energy input. You uh, basically tell your grid operator, it's like, hey, uh, we have this much like generally back in the days, we only used to have uh, giant aluminum smelters. Now we will have other things also where it's like, oh, every plant can do this. So generally during daytime, you will have like surplus of energy that will go into the heat soak. Uh, if you are in a you know European nation, which has a lot of wind, that wind will also go here. So input would be much wider than the output that you need. So energy goes in, you heat this puppy up. This is your thermal soak. So then you run an air circulation unit. So now you extract the heat out of it and dump it into another fluid exchange. What fluid? Again, depending on systems. If some systems require basically energy to be dumped in hot air, you will dump air. If it requires energy to be dumped in some unique gas, it will be dumped into the gas. If it requires to be dumped into oil, it will be oil. Like it's your choice, dealer's choice, whatever the system requires. So this exchange. So And this also allows them to keep uh, the system clean and efficient. 
and then uh, after this you can have even if you want because of the high temperature this is critical compared to sand and other systems this is very high temperature meaning you can actually get steam that is close enough that it almost behaves like a coal power plant meaning you can actually get good efficient no, but again it's a stupid thing to do you can run a turbine out of it you can get electricity out of it but from here to turbine to generator efficiency would be bad so this is supposed to directly be your heat source so you can get a steam again many industries do require steam lot of it so in those set of scenario heat steam efficiency done go home uh, again you could get energy but again that's ill advice let's just put it that way and if you just need heat for clinkers and all that just heat it up so it's a very simple setup. low cost energy inputs heat is generated and stored here and then load is like it could be even a continuous load where it's running 24 into 7 this output will just fluctuate up and down day and night but this uh, output will be constant and you will put as many brick as you need and what about energy density it's almost matching lithium ion almost like lithium ion battery banks it's matching that kind of efficiency and as you make it bigger this actually will start to exceed it imagine multiple stacks of them and just one chamber one it will be like whoa so and uh, why it's so efficient because of the temperature other heat systems they do not have their megawatt uh, hour per ton capacity simply because they are very low temperature most of them are like 100 200 300 degrees celsius this puppy easily crosses 1500 degrees celsius so and again they are trying to make sure that this exceeds so high temperature like almost 2500 degrees celsius so they can reach a point where the like steel industry can be taken care of this way that will decarbonize such a large section it will like literally uh, next day you will be like whoa what happened to like why the air is so clean we don't have fuel burners in every industry if this puppy cracks that much again right now it's already there it's already being deployed and uh, slowly it's becoming that point and if somebody cracks it which it can be done be mindful principal science engineering is there it's just that final fine tuning where it can cross 2000 degrees celsius output problem solved so that's the operation of it so what we can expect in the future well uh, reality is this is one of those another technology which i really love it's not magical it's not like if this then that no it's just like what do we have it's very wise and clever so wise part is like hey what is the ability uh, like thing that we have that absorbs insane amount of temperature well refractory bricks or fire bricks that's how we literally handle molten metal so we know for a fact absolute fact that those can handle the temperature we have historical data on that so what do we do we make it clever basically enjoy some geometry into it so you can utilize good airflow and you can utilize good uh, temperature balancing so you do not fatigue them that's clever and you solve the issue of temperature because you do not have a medium that is uh, the limiting factor so you can go very high very hot as hot as you need to so it's a very one of the best thermal system energy storage system that i have seen so far and here's the interesting part the actual demonstration like somebody built it and actually deployed it that has happened past tense 2022 past tense video link down below it's like cargary renewable fuels plant uh, that has this puppy and that's a small puppy like you can see that that's one container so it's a very small puppy that is two megawatt hour and output temperature of 1000 degrees celsius right here they solved 80 percent of the planet's issue right here the fact that they can do this like it's been doing this 1000 degrees celsius done over go home that's the most amazing part and uh, measured efficiency is at 90 percent now like didn't i say 98 percent yeah this is tiny you need a larger unit the larger you make it the more efficient it becomes so again 90 percent is from economics point of view more than good enough because you are buying electricity when it's super cheap and how cheap in x sometimes it could be 3x cheaper so if you only lose 10 percent of it that's like shut up take money so flat out this plant went from like having its own fuel burners to like bro we good we good we good we sorted and uh, what about the company so this is where they have the plant and uh, they literally contracted with another uh, refractory brick manufacturer to mass produce this meaning they have already reached a capacity of 90 gigawatt hour annually battery production capacity meaning they have already reaching a point in real life as in like you can go and buy this far ahead of almost all other battery technology so it's not like if this then that tomorrow this we got no no sir we're ready we're ready to go meaning if uh, countries are wise they will invest into this if uh, factories are wise they will buy into this so it's one of those things that be mindful it's already been done so you have real world test data and this is just one that i'm sharing with they have three plants that are already done and that's why they got the contract for like a giant uh, you know custom built factories for this because it's a sorted thing it will happen 
and it's a very um, good way to solve a problem rather than bitching about it is solving a problem i'm really happy with that it's like oh renewables cannot like it has an intermittency how would you solve it oh majority of energy consumption is just for uh, basically heat what if we create a heat soak we dump energy it becomes heat and we draw out of it without any issue like exactly how our hydro dams work like rivers always have up and down in uh, basically water flow then why do we get 24 into 7 energy out of it we have a buffer known as reservoir what if we had the same thing for heat you dump heat whenever you you dump energy into it whenever you need to it's like if middle of the night let's say wind turbines are like going lol you know like, okay dump the energy into it like we literally had crude version of this long ago and we are still using them how about we add more to it how about we make our industries more adaptable more economically viable less polluting everybody will win and no magical technology no lithium mining nothing this will work and again it can be recycled so this this sort of solutions really make me happy it's not like if this then that it's like ready go now so this was my presentation on one of the best thermal energy storage solution that I have seen. Hopefully you guys have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please give the like button, share it with your friend. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.